Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, this conversation that we have Monday through Friday at 7 o'clock a.m., where we've been sharing time with the Bible Project and reading the Bible from cover to cover. Uh, but also we talk about different topics and subjects, and you and I have uh, the biggest small group at 7 a.m. in the world every day right here. At pray first but pray first is more than a conversation and those of you who have been here for a while understand that pray first is a principle that we give God the first of everything the first of our day the first of our week the first of our month the first of our year the first of our finances the first of our time the first of our dedication devotion service everything God must be first because if first place is not in order nothing else can be in order either hit the hearts hit the lights go crazy on those and on all of our first-time guests know that you are glad they are here Good morning, Ed. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, Daryl. Good morning, Sean. Good morning, Chip. Good morning, Audra. Good morning. Come on, hit those hearts. Hit those likes. I know some of y'all have kind of, you know, slacked up on that. Ah, that don't matter. Well, it does. It matters because you're part of Pray First, and this is interactive, and we're doing this together. It matters because the people who join us for the very first time, I want them to see hearts and stuff going crazy because it is for them. And it matters because that counts towards analytics and whether or not Facebook allows this to even get on people's pages. Good morning, Neil. Good morning, Randall. Good morning, Christine. Good morning, Brandy. Good morning, Nita K. Good morning, Donna. Good morning, everybody. Hashtag live if you're in the 7 o'clock hour. Hashtag recorded if you're joining at any other time. Hashtag shared and get this out on your pages. I know it's Friday, and I know I'm not supposed to be here. Go ahead and share this out on your page. I don't want anybody to miss these concepts of marriage and single and married and God and contract and covenant and living marriage and discovering life. So please get this out on your pages. Good morning, Deborah. How are you doing? Good morning, Michelle. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, Mel? All right. So this morning is going to be a little bit more difficult for me because by Friday morning, I am prepared for the message of the weekend on Sunday at Cross Point. And so I am fully loaded for Sunday morning bear. But this is Friday morning when generally I'm still in the bed right now. So I'm going to try and not preach Friday's message to you. I'm going to try to bring you something different. Please, Lord, help me do that because this weekend I'm talking about the covenant between God and man, the marital covenant between God and man, and why it's not weird that Jesus, a dude, wants to marry me, also a dude. That's weird. That's it to me. That's I don't I don't grasp that if I don't understand this weekend's message. And uh, I understand you ladies may not understand that. You might. Uh, but, but Clay and I, and uh, Neil and I, and Raymond and I, and Daryl and I, and the rest of us have a hard time thinking about we're the bride of anything, okay? Just, let's just get that out there. And all the dudes who understand, hashtag yep, yep. So what I'm going to try to talk about today is, is how our relationship as the church the bride of Christ, as it relates to Jesus, the groom, the husband of the church, how that relationship that I have with God informs my other relationships. Because I think we have it backwards. I think that we look at our married relationships, uh, you know, Neil with Casey, uh, Clay with Molly, myself with Brandy, Daryl with Tammy, that we look at our marital relationships and we try to understand God. We try to understand the marriage between God and the church by looking at our own married relationships we try to assume that we understand, well, I'm going to look at my marriage, and that's going to help me understand my, my relationship to God, the, my marital covenant to God. But that's backwards. Uh, we go into marriage very ignorant, don't we? 
We go into marriage not having known a marital covenant. So as I told Crosspoint this weekend, I don't think any single person should ever get married. Because single people have not been prepared to be married. How do two single people get prepared to be married? They enter a covenant relationship with God. Now, I also want all of you to understand this. And when you enter that covenant relationship with God, you begin to understand your marriage based on what you've learned about a covenant relationship with God. So don't try to learn how to be married to your spouse. Don't try to understand God uh, through your marriage. If you want to know more about marriage, understand the relationship that you have with Him. I also want to speak to everyone who's not married. Uh, this is so important that you understand that a living marriage, living marriage, uh, has nothing to do with a spouse. And that if you're married, a living marriage has nothing to do with your spouse. Man, I sure hope my husband hears this. Woo! He needs to listen. Man, I tell you, I, I love what you're talking about, Pastor Doug, but if, if my wife doesn't change, we can't have a living marriage. Well, you see, I'm a follower of Christ. My, my, my wife is not a follower of Christ. We can't have a living marriage. You see... I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a follower of Christ, but my wife's not a follower of Christ, so there can't be a living marriage. You see, I'm single. I'm not married to anybody, so I can't have a living marriage. None of that is true. That's only true when you try to look at your physical marriage and then understand God. You must be married to God first. Now, I want to answer another question. Is it okay to be single forever. Can I choose to be single? Is single a spiritual option for me? I want you to listen crystal clearly. There are single people that understand marriage better than couples who are married. I want to say that one more time. There are many more single people who understand marriage, and I know this offends some of you married people, single people can't understand marriage, they're not married. That's because you look at your marriage as if that's marriage, and you understand marriage based on your marriage. There are single people who are married to the Holy Spirit, they are married to God, they're in a relationship of Christ and the church, and they know marriage better than some of you who are couples. So, where do you find that? Where, where is singleness a spiritual choice that people can make? Glad you ask. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is the love chapter. All the, all the weddings, love is patient, love is, love is all those things, all that's true. And you read the 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, Tasha is bringing up a, a fairly decent point. <laughs> uh, Jesus uh, was physically single, but they'd been married to Israel for thousands of years. And it, I can't get into that teaching right now, but she's right. Here's someone else who was single. The dude that wrote 1 Corinthians chapter 13 about love, single. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he writes this. Paul says, Now regarding the question you ask in your letter. Now, I'm going to read what he says, and then it's going to tell us what the question was that was asked in the letter. Regarding the question you ask in your letter, Yes, it is good to live a celibate life. Yes, it is good to live a celibate life. Paul says, Now regarding the question you ask. So, the question was asked of Paul in a previous letter. Is it okay to be celibate? Is it okay to be single? Paul answers the question. Yes, 
It is good to live a celibate life, but because there is so much sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman should have her own husband. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs and the wife should fulfill her husband's needs. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband and the husband gives over authority of his body to his wife. Do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you can give yourself more completely to prayer. Afterward, you should come together again so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command, but I wish every one of you were single just as I am. He says, I issue this as a concession. This is not a command, but I wish that every one of you were single just as I am. But God gives to some the gift of marriage and to others the gift of singleness. Verse 8, so I say to those who aren't married and to the widows, it is better that you stay unmarried just as I am. But if they cannot control themselves, they should go ahead and marry. It's better to marry than to burn with lust. Now he goes on down there and he talks about all of the problems that, that, that pop up and come up. But, but point blank, to all of you who are single and to all of you who are married, listen to me. Every one of you who are single and every one of you who are married, your covenant relationship with Jesus Christ comes first. And that's where you learn to submit. Ephesians chapter 5 says, Wives, submit to your husbands. Ephesians chapter 5 says, Husbands, submit to your wives. Ephesians chapter 5 says, There is mutual submission. I promise you, a man who will not submit to God Almighty will not submit to you, lady. A woman who will not submit to God Almighty will not submit to you, sir. It's in that marital relationship between the church and Jesus Christ that we learn submission. Listen to me, every single person and every married person. Your marriage to Jesus Christ is first. It's where you learn to serve. Listen, ma'am. If that man will not serve God Almighty, he will not serve you. <laughs> listen, listen here, sir. If that lady will not serve God Almighty, she will not serve you. Listen here, every single person and every single man or every married woman or every married man, if, listen, listen, ladies, if he will not sacrifice his life for God Almighty, he will not sacrifice his life for you. Listen here, man. If she will not sacrifice her life for God Almighty, she will not sacrifice her life for you. You cannot understand the marital relationship with God by looking at your marriage. You must understand your marriage by looking at, learning, studying, and understand a covenant marriage relationship to Jesus Christ. It is that relationship that informs and empowers your earthly relationship. It is the difference in covenant and contract. In a covenant in a covenant, two parties agree to give up their rights and take on the other's responsibility. That is exactly the covenant I'm teaching on this weekend. At Cross Point Church this weekend, you and I are going to walk between, we are physically, 
We, me and you, I'm going to lead you. We are going to physically get up out of our chairs and we are going to walk between the pieces of the covenant marital relationship of God himself this weekend at Crosspoint. I can't wait for you and I to walk through the covenant physically. We're going to get up out of our chairs, out of the black chairs, the couple hundred chairs on the floor at Crosspoint. We're going to get up out of those chairs and we're going to walk between the covenant so that we can understand what a marital relationship is, what a marital covenant is. We're going to be able to look at our relationships and say, Woo! I find fulfillment in my marital relationship with Christ that makes me understand I'm accepted. It helps me understand that not only am I accepted, I have an identity. Not only do I have an identity, I have security. Not only do I have security, I have a purpose. And now I can love others better because I have been so loved by God, who is a father to the fatherless, a husband to the husbandless, and a defender of the widow. Listen to me. It's going to be powerful. A covenant gives up rights. A covenant, listen to me clearly, can be kept by one party alone. I know that doesn't set well with with you who want a divorce. But a covenant can be kept by one party alone. A contract cannot. Because a contract protects our rights by limiting our responsibilities. I'm going to say these again because I want you to think. There is God. And He informs my relationships with others. My relationships with others do not inform my relationship to God. I'm going to read these definitions one more time, then I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to uh, implore you to not miss a Sunday morning. It is so into me right now. I want to preach it to you so bad right now. I can't stand it, so I'm going to get off of here. But I'm going to read you these, and then I'm going to go. A contract protects my rights. By limiting our responsibilities. A covenant lays up or, or lays down, gives up or lays down my rights and picks up the other's responsibility. You, as a married person, can have a happy marriage. You, as a single person, can be a happy single. You, as a divorced person, can live a forgiven plan A life. Looking to God for what's next. You, as a widow, might be sad, you might feel lonely, but you are not alone. And when you enter in that marital covenant with Jesus Christ, He becomes a husband to you. And not only are you not alone, there will be peace that surpasses understanding. Marriage is not a class of people. Married is not a group of people who have, you know, made it. Every single person has the ability to have a happy marriage. If you're in a marriage and you're lost, the only way you're going to have a happy marriage is for you to be found. If you're in a marriage and you're lost, the only way for you to have a happy marriage is for you to be born again. If you are lost, the only way for you to have a happy marriage is for you to be saved. Holy Spirit, I pray for everyone listening and every person watching. God, that, that, that we would understand that there are living marriages and there are dead marriages. 
and that there are singles who have happier marriages than some couples do. But every single person can have a living marriage as long as the Holy Spirit has come inside of them. And Jesus calls them bride. It's not weird for a man. It's not weird for a woman. But only when we understand covenant. And only when we understand how it was from the beginning and not after the fall. So God, bring them in. Bring them in in this weekend. If there's a man out there listening, bring us in because we need to hear this. We cannot fathom. We cannot understand. It is not enticing to think we're going to be some kind of bride with some kind of wedding dress and we're going to be presented to some groom. That does not entice us. That, that revolts us. That repulses us. That, that doesn't draw us. That pushes us away. But, but help us, God, understand. This, we're not trying to look at the marriage relationship between us and you through the eyes we have for marriages we have here. We're trying to understand our marriages here by understanding our marriage there. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those. And uh, Debbie, I'm loving this series too, but it's stretching me pretty bad. All these, I mean, I have, I've never preached on this. I've never taught on this. I've never thought about this. I've never heard this. I've, this message series is, is vast uh, and it's too much. It makes my head go, um, but we're learning how to have a living quiet time, living worship, living marriages, living faith, living works, uh, all these living things. Uh, so we're just going to have to get used to it. It's going to inform everything from now on. I love you guys. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those. Hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared. Get this out on your page. And this weekend we're going to have a, a very powerful message, but we're also going to get up out of our chairs and we're going to walk between the pieces where Yeshua kept the covenant uh, keeps the covenant for us. One party, doing all the work. It's a cool thing. I love y'all. Bye. I'll see you Sunday.